voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. You are warmly welcome to this worship service. I have had an important question on my mind for a while. What does the voice of God sound like? Reverend Emma is here to give us more inspiration in today's sermon. Let us commence our worship with this rendition of John H. Sammy's hymn, Trust and Obey. Let's sing together when we walk with the Lord. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He shares for us. We will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only, only trust and obey. We are family of God to offer him praise and thanksgiving and to hear and receive his holy word. Our topic today is hearing God in career growth. We also gather to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. Let us pray together. Inspire us, O Lord, as we come to worship you. Draw us in prayer and in praises, and help us to understand your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. As individuals and as a community, let us humbly confess our sins and failures. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and the good you have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. On this seventh Sunday after Pentecost, St. John reminds us, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let us pray using the collect. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts most excellently gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, it's now time to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that give thanks to his name. Amen. Praise Jesus. You're welcome Amen. to this Sunday worship. Um, we're going to praise our Lord in, the song, in a song called Mukama Ngamulunji. I know he has been good to you. He has been good to me. Been good to everyone. So put on your dancing shoes, stand up and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes.
Lord in a song called Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's go. Jesus is mine. He's mine. He's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. He's mine. He's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. Come on. He's mine. He's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. He's mine. He's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. Hey. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Hey, he's, he's mine. mine. He's mine forevermore. He's my savior, my redeemer. He's mine forevermore. He's my savior, hey. my redeemer. Hey, he's mine forevermore. He's my savior, my he's redeemer. He's mine forevermore. Come on, let's dance with Jesus, amen. Can you pull up in this truck? Are we ready? One, two, three, we go. Hey, come on. Uh, uh. One more time. Come on. Hey, come on. Oh, Jesus is mine. Hey, he's mine. He's mine. Jesus is mine. Hey, he's mine. He's mine Jesus is mine. Hey, he's mine forevermore. He's my father. Father, come on. He's my savior. Savior. He's my healer. Healer. He's my father. Father. He's my shaper, shaper. my provider, Redeemer. Jesus is mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. Come on, hey. Oh, oh, Jesus is mine. Hey. Father, Father, we bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise and as we progress in worship, uh, in a song called I Surrender, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you shall continue lifting up everything that is stressing you, everything that is on your mind. Surrender it all unto him, any challenge that you have. Father, we bless you, Lord, this morning. And all our troubles, we bring them to you, Jesus, oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, we praise you, Lord. Here I am, down on my knees. for you desperate for you I surrender Jesus. join me 
as we sing Drench My Soul. Come on. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst. Hey. I hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide, I know you praise in your mighty name, O oh God. And Lord, we pray that you shall come and inhibit yourself in the praise of your people, Lord. Jesus, we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and take your place in the presence of your people. Like I'm rushing with Jesus, breathe with me. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. back the glory Lord we surrender everything Lord that is not of you Lord oh our worries Lord and our troubles Lord Lord we surrender them to you and we pray that Father Lord you shall take away the troubles thank you Jesus thank you Father in Jesus is mighty name we do pray and believe Amen we thank the worship team for leading us through and it's very, very great opportunity for you to worship the Lord, dance, and all what you have, you give it unto the Lord. Would you be having any question, prayer request? Get to us, comment, or inbox on our Facebook page. Call, SMS, or WhatsApp our phone numbers on the screen below. Our physical offices are also open for prayers, counseling, and to receive and bless your offerings. We also appreciate your generous giving towards this ministry that is able to reach out 
hundreds of people with the life transforming gospel ministry regularly. Indeed, there has been enough bread in the Lord's house for the staff and the volunteers who work hard to keep this ministry running. And you are set to reach many more, all because of your support. It's time for the word, and our preacher is Reverend Injuan Emmanuel Mwesigwa, the chaplain of St. Kakumba Chapel, Chambogo University, Kampala, Uganda. I am delighted to be with you again, sharing the word of God, and we are still looking at the book of Zechariah and reflecting on hearing God. God loves to speak. He loves to speak to you. He loves to speak to us. And he needs us to listen. So we want to continue along this line. And today we want to look at Zechariah chapter number 6. But before I read the word of God, let me extend more welcome to you who are following these services in Uganda, in Kampala, in villages of Uganda, and all over the world, in the Middle East, in the Far East, in the Europe, and, and in the Americas. We love to know that God is doing wonderful work in your life. And we have devoted ourselves and committed ourselves to continue this noble ministry until Jesus comes again. And so we will not give up through all the technology that has come to us. We will continue glorifying God with all that we have. Let us pray as we begin. Almighty God, we thank you because your word is a light. We thank you because your word is living bread and you have given us opportunity from time to time to hear you speak. Now, even in this time of sharing your word at this point, may you open our ears, may we hear you, may we run with that good news that you are bringing to us, that we may be agents of revival and agents of good news and goodwill to the people around us in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are looking at Zechariah chapter 6, and I'll read from verse 1 to verse 8. Now I lifted up my eyes again and looked, and behold, four chariots were coming from between the two mountains. With the first chariot were red horses, with the second chariot black horses, with the third chariot white horses, and with the fourth chariot strong dappled horses. Then I spoke and said to the angel who was speaking with me, What are these? My Lord, the angel replied to me, These are the four spirits of heaven going forth after standing before the Lord of all the earth, with one of which the black horses are going forth to the north country, and the white horses go after them, while the dappled ones go forth to the south country. When the strong ones went out, they were eager to go patrol the earth. And he said, Go, patrol the earth. So they patrolled the earth. Then he cried out to me and spoke to me, saying, See, those who are going to the land of the north have appeased my wrath in the land of the north. This is the word of the Lord. Now, as I have told you before, Zechariah had a very busy night on the 15th of February, 519 BC, a night in which he had eight visions. And whenever I read any of these visions, they are so mind-boggling, mind-dazzling, and I would have been like Zechariah to ask the angel, what are these? And sometimes the angel is even uh, so stubborn. He says, don't you understand these? Oh my God. They are so confusing. But we have the opportunity to study and learn together and find out what God was saying through these visions. This that I have just read was the eighth, the eighth vision. And I'll be telling you more about all the eight, a little bit in a snapshot as we go along. But let me draw you to the applications of the readings from Zechariah that we have been engaging with we are looking at hearing God. And in my previous sermon in this series, 
I actually described to you the fact that Zechariah was receiving a consistent message from God regarding the restoration of Judah, regarding the restoration of the people of God, regarding the rebuilding of the temple. That was the second temple. Regarding the good news of hope to the people of God who were in confusion, whose exile was not ending, was ending half-half, but this was a message that God cares about you, a message of hope, a message of love, a message of encouragement. And maybe some of us need to hear this message of encouragement. Your hopes were in a certain business and maybe fire has burnt it down. Your hopes were in a certain economic direction, a national or regional economic direction, and now policies are turning around, policies are being changed, and you don't know what is going to happen. There is a message of hope as long as you look to the Lord, as long as you trust in the Lord. And so, whenever I, I, I want to hear from God, one of the things that I want to do is to simply bust in praise. Bust in praise because no matter whether it's morning or evening or nighttime, God is worthy of all praise. And do you want to hear God? Last time I challenged you and I gave you some of the things you should do. If you want to hear God, I want to add some two things at this point. Well, I told you that you need, first of all, to be ready to hear and you need to cut off noises and, and silence every mama so that you are able to be attentive. And we do this by cultivating the discipline of devotion and Bible reading and prayer and silence and fasting and just being attentive in the house of the Lord. I also told us how we must familiarize with the voice of God familiarize with the voice of God by reading his word and just hearing what does God say? How does he speak? And I also warned you that you must be ready for action, ready to fully obey what God is saying. Let me just add two more issues regarding hearing God. And the one I want to add now is that we must be ready to praise the Lord. You see, the moment you focus on God, the moment you think about God, immediately you must start praising the Lord. That's why we began off this service by singing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. And we also sang, Trust and Obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. These songs bespeak of people who have entered the presence of the Lord, for whom the Lord has revealed himself, and they know that this is a moment to trust, this is a moment to obey, this is a moment to praise, this is a moment to dance and praise. This is the reaction that comes from those who have been met with the presence of God. Now, Finally, on this hearing, God, I want to also say that God speaks through scientific revelation. Scientific revelation is one of the ways God speaks. And therefore, when you are studying science and you are studying technology and you are listening to all these discoveries, discoveries in life sciences, in anatomy, and seeing how people dissect people and are able to go to the lung and heal the broken lung and go to the liver and chop off a, an infected part of the liver and put back a person together. All these kind of anatomy discoveries and, uh, and as well as the discoveries of the physical sciences, the galaxies and all those things. When we are studying those things, there is a way we can hear the voice of God. God revealing himself as God of wonders beyond all galaxies. So let us be eager to hear God speak in all the languages he may come to speak to us. So for Zechariah, in all these visions, God was bringing a message of hope, a message of restoration, a message that God cares about his people. Let us continue listening to him. Now today, I added something to do with career growth. God's will for your career growth is something important, an issue that you want to hear God about. Some of us have gone to universities 
and colleges and either done certificates or diplomas or degrees not because it's God's will, but because perhaps parents pushed us there or maybe you had interest then and now the interest is gone. Does God care about your career? Of course, there are many of us who did a, a, a degree course thinking we are going to work as this kind of profession and God has channeled you elsewhere. I see many auditors who are engineers and I see many preachers who are accountants and so many things happen like that. Does God care about your career growth? I want to encourage you regarding career. I want to encourage you that God minds your career. God actually is mindful of what you do. He holds you accountable. He holds you accountable for the things that you are supposed to do. And I want to give you two reasons from the Bible. Number one is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. This is when God was planning with the angels and people who were with him, planning, let us make man in our own image and let him do the following. And in verse 28, the Bible says he actually implemented the plan. He made man in his own image and gave him five duties. Number one, full, fru be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, fill the earth. Number four, subdue it. Number five, rule over every living thing. And when I look at all those duties, it simply means God is mindful. He is careful. He actually sees what we do and wants to evaluate and find out whether you are actually fulfilling your task, you who are made in the image of God. Are you fruitful? Does your speech bring life to people? Do your actions bring life to people? Do, do, do your discoveries advance the human race and the world that God made? Because you've been given charge to be fruitful, to multiply. And I, I like the Bible because it says that, you know, a, a good person leaves an inheritance for his children. These children who are looking to inherit things from their fathers and mothers and so on, they are right in a way, but in another way, they should only inherit, but not use that as their only capital. Because they should also work for themselves and leave a bigger inheritance for their children. Because if we only inherit that Progress, that progression is a geometric progression which tends asymptotically towards the zero axis. In other words, you'll keep dividing things, dividing things, because if one person had an acre of land, two children inherit it, each of them will have half. Then each of those will have two children, they will each have a quarter, and then you'll get to a point where they have nothing. Therefore, inheriting is okay. But every man is supposed to work hard and leave a bigger inheritance for their children. That is multiplication. Fill the earth is the other one. Fill the earth. Let there be evidence that you have lived. Let there not be only the evidence of your name. But let there be things people can say, okay, yes, yes, this, this person actually contributed this to the earth. Subdue it. And rule over every living thing. This is the mandate of God. And therefore, your hard work, your career advancement, God wants to see you. God wants to see you go from glory to glory. The second reason I want to give you, which is emphasizing this point that God minds your career, comes from the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, Jesus Christ taught his disciples, and by extension taught all of us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Now, when you expound that line, you find that God wants us to be participants in bringing his kingdom. And we have preached several messages about the fact that whether you are an engineer, or you are an accountant, or you are a businessman trading in cars, or you are one who does clearing and forwarding of merchandise, or you are in the URA, or you are in whichever place, you have a mandate to bring the kingdom of God, to say, let your kingdom come, to be a channel through which the kingdom of God is seen and is manifested in our world. 
And this is not only for preachers and teachers of God's word and for priests and pastors. This is for all of us. Otherwise, Jesus would have only restricted the prayer he taught to the pastors. But all of us say the prayer and say, your kingdom come, your will be done. It means that in your career, you have a role to play in bringing the manifestation of God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Let's move on then. And as we think about the fact that God minds our careers, God uh, is interested in your growth in career. Let's find out what is he speaking in the book of Zechariah as we look at the reading that we took in chapter number 6. I already told you that this chapter 6 actually records the eighth vision. And when you read a little bit wider, you find that the eighth vision is connected to the first. And the second vision is connected to the seventh. And the sixth vision is connected to the third. And the fourth vision is connected to the fifth. Let me just give you a quick summary. When you have time to study this book, you'll find it interesting. Some of the things are a bit hard and boring, but you'll find it interesting. Now, did you hear that I read about horses? At least that one is a good picture. Horses, and they are also there in the first vision, which is recorded in chapter 1, verse, uh, uh, the first few verses. And my emphasis on that chapter has always been in verse 16 and verse 17. In the first vision, there were horses. We read, we read this two weeks ago from verse 7 to verse 17. There were horses. And the thing they were doing is the exact thing that the ones in this eighth vision are doing. These horses were be inspecting the earth. Very busy inspecting the earth. And I'm going to come back to that. Let me first tell you what is in the second and the seventh vision. In the second vision, there are four horns. And these represent world powers. In the seventh vision, there is a woman in a basket. And this woman is carried to Babylon. Babylon was one of those horns, one of those superpowers. And the message in the second and seventh vision is that the wickedness of these powers is going to be challenged and is going to be punished. Yeah. There is a verse which says, terrify them and throw down these horns of nations who are against God's people. The second and seventh vision. Now the third and sixth visions, in the third one we see a measuring line to measure Jerusalem. And in the sixth vision we see a flying scroll whose dimensions have been given 30 feet by 15 feet. And they, they, they are mainly focusing on the city of Jerusalem. And there is an assurance. This is what I preached about last Sunday. Uh, we read from chapter 2. In chapter 2, the first few verses are about the third vision. And this third vision with the measuring line. Uh, and the city of Jerusalem is being assured of restoration and sustenance. It is being given the word. You will be a city without walls. You will be a great city. You know, cities are exciting. And uh, in today's Uganda, some municipalities have been, have been made into cities. Mbarara is one of them. Is Arua one of them? But Jinja, I know, is one of them and others. And it's very exciting to be made a city. But just picture, just take a picture of some small town in the village being declared a city. Now, that would be such a, I mean, you are supposed to first become a town council, then a municipal council, then a city. Now just imagine some small town council somewhere or some town board in the village being declared a city. Maybe this is what it sounded like in the third and sixth vision where the word of God is coming and saying, Jerusalem, God is declaring you a city without walls. You'll be a large city. But we see this message coming to pass at a certain time. What about the fourth and fifth visions? These are the ones I love the most, maybe because they are at the center. But the fourth vision, which is recorded in chapter 3 of this book, is about a priest, a priest called Joshua, who unfortunately was dressed not smartly like me today. He was dressed in filthy garments, 
and was standing there, and there was Satan coming to accuse him before God. This priest is bad. He is not doing his job. This priest is sinful. And as he was there, the angel, uh, between the angel and God, one of them said, I rebuke you. And Satan kept silent. And God immediately ordered for new clothes and said, remove from this priest, Joshua, those filthy garments, remove them. They removed them. And they gave him new clothes. And the guy was smart. Woo! And there was such joy. There was a message of restoration of a priesthood that will honor God, that will preach the gospel, that will stand before the presence of God and bring to him the needs of the world. A faithful priesthood that is called upon in our generation today. So that was the, th that was the fourth vision clean garments for the priest Joshua. And that was so symbolic. A renewal of the priesthood. A renewal of ministry. I love this. And in the fifth vision, which is connected with the fourth one, while the fourth one had clean garments for Joshua the high priest, in the fifth one, we have a word of encouragement for the governor Zerubbabel. And that's where we find the famous verse, Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The hand that laid the foundation of the, of the temple will actually finish it. Hallelujah! This is an encouragement for the governors, for those who are spearheading projects for the development of of God's work, of God's holy temple, of God's ministry, of physical things that will promote the ministry. Now, let me go back to the first and eighth vision. And maybe this will be able to take us all the way up to the end of this message. I told you that in the first and eighth visions, we see horses. And the ones I read about, some of them are white, some of them are red, some of them are dappled, some of them are black. And what I read about was that these horses, some of them were going to the north. Two groups were going to the north and some were going to the south. Do you want to ask me why they were not going to the east and the west? It is because Zechariah is seeing these things when he is in Palestine. And when you are in Palestine, on the west there is the Mediterranean Sea. And on the east there is the River Jordan. So there there is nowhere to go. And there is also a wilderness, a very, very bad desert in the east. So there, people would not really take those directions. They only took the north and the south. And why the north and the south again? Because the enemies of Judah always came from the north or from the south. In the north came, I mean, there was the Babylonians. Whenever they wanted to attack, they would come from the north. Assyrians would always come from the north. The Seleucids would always come from the north. What about in the south? It's the Egyptians who were also powerful by then. They would also come from the south and attack Judah. Therefore, this north and south issue, which is in chapter 6, is talking about the enemies, the powerful nations that always inflicted pain on the people of God of Judah. In our day today, I have thought about these horses who are inspecting the earth as fighter jets. I think if these visions came to us today, God would not help make us see horses. He would either make us see some C-130s. C-130 planes, cargo planes are the ones which came and did Operation Thunderbolt or Operation Jonathan, the one at Entebbe in the 70s where hostages were rescued. Uh, that, that Israeli operation was bad. Maybe we would have... If, if a vision was to come like today, it would have showed us maybe C-130s or some B-2s. I think B-2s were used in one of the world wars. Those were very, very lethal fighter jets. Or maybe we would have seen some Airbus 340, which is so huge and can go long haul and can inspect the whole earth. Because those would need to go to the Americas, they would need to go to Japan and China and go to France and all the G7 and inspect all these world powers. Ah, God's eyes watching, not just the north and the south. 
God's eye is inspecting the whole earth. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it is all the Lord's. There is no one who can escape from the eye of the Lord. So, in this vision, Zechariah sees this inspection happening and the results of this inspection is judgment for the nations that pretend to be at peace, that think they are at peace at the expense of God's people, at the expense of God's kingdom, at the expense of God's will. There is judgment for them. When we are pursuing our careers, friends, we are building kingdoms, we are building palaces, we are be building things on earth. Maybe we are not building such powerful nations being inspected by these horses, but whatever you are building must be inspected by God. The horses we are reading about today, they are busy inspecting your estate. They are busy inspecting your money, your bank accounts. They are busy inspecting your motives. They are busy inspecting your investments. Are those investments building the kingdom of God? Are those things building God's house? And that is the question we must ask ourselves as we think about hearing God for career growth. Career growth in the context of God's kingdom is only career growth when it builds the kingdom of God, when with the growth we can say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. When with that growth we can actually stand as the stewards that God has sent out, standing as stewards whom God created in his image to manage the earth on his behalf. That is the challenge I am bringing to you. and. My friend, you need to look at your career and subject it to that test. The test of your kingdom come, your will be done. And if you do not find answers to whether your career growth is building God's kingdom, then you need to hear God in a particular way regarding your career. And I pray that God will speak and reveal to you what you must do, how you must exercise your talents, how you must exercise your learning, how you must exercise the resources around you for the building of his kingdom. You as an individual, you as a family, you as a leader of an organization, you as a leader of a country, you as a leader of a regional block, the East African community and the SADC and all these European unions, and, and you as a leader... God has an accountability to ask of you because the horses are coming. They may not be the kind of horses you think about. Some people trust in horses so much. It may not be a Boeing 777 or an Airbus. It is another kind of horse which has the eye of the Lord that has been sent out to inspect. And friends, we must give the accountability. As the Lord God Almighty calls us to the fact that there is judgment coming for whoever touches the people of God, touches the apple of his eye. Whoever is advancing at the expense of God's kingdom, whoever is advancing at the expense of the people of God, is brewing their own fire because God will send that inspection team. Let us hear God and may he help us to channel our energies and channel all our efforts to building his kingdom even as we grow in our careers. Let us pray. God, our heavenly father, we thank you because you are a God of faithfulness without injustice. You are a God who knows the detail of all that we are doing and you desire that we would grow. You desire that we would grow, but not grow to build our own empires and our own kingdoms, but to grow in such a way that we build your kingdom. Lord, you are speaking to us as you spoke to Zechariah. In his visions, he saw judgment coming upon powerful nations of the earth that always just grew at the expense of your people and your kingdom. Lord, help us to heed your instruction today to hear your voice and heed this instruction 
and be able to channel our energies and our wisdom and the things that you've given us for the building of your kingdom, O oh God. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now joyfully bring our gifts to God. Remember that God loves a cheerful giver. We love to share with you what God is doing. This lockdown season has been challenging and we have had to learn many things, but we thank God because his faithfulness expressed partly through your faithful generosity has kept us going. We have increased the number of channels through which this ministry can be accessed on social media, on TV, through Zoom, and many other things that we are bringing together. And we have even increased the amount of output. Apart from the Sunday services, we have children's services, we have youth services, and we have Bible studies, which are all accessed in all these different ways. We thank you for your support. The methods you can use to support this ministry have been displayed on this screen. And we are going to continue in this giving as we sing a prayer. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. God bless you as you give. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to hear you speak to us, to challenge us and send us out into deeper reflection regarding how we may build your kingdom. And thank you for the opportunity you've given us to give in your house. Now I pray, God Almighty, that you will bless the offerings of your children and bless the work of their hands. May you indeed cause them to be fruitful and to multiply as they seek to build your kingdom. And in so doing, may you bless them as they grow in their careers and bless them indeed. Bless their loved ones, bless their plans, and remove every obstacle and build for them bridges that they will reach their destinies for your glory and for the welfare of all of us. And church, may the peace of God, which is far greater than we all can understand, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. We're going to go out as we praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Let the people rejoice. Amen. Oh!
truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Oh, praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Let the eye hear His voice. Praise the Lord! Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he has done sing great things yes come on great things he has told us great things he has done and great our rejoicing Jesus the Son, come on, but pure and higher and greater will be a wonder, a wonder a yeah. when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, hey. praise, praise the Lord, let the eye hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the be. Jesus.